So welcome back to Breaking the Norm. Uh, for this podcast, we've got something a bit different. I've brought on Stuart Turner. He is a sports management and injury consultant and co-founder of Tier 1 Training and Rehabilitation Systems in Northampton. He works with some very high-level guys. And um, I wanted to get Stuart on because I saw him doing a presentation to um, like a corporate business setting type thing on stress and its effects physically and on everyday life and I thought that'd be really interesting to get on the podcast so I asked Stuart to come on and he was very happy to do so we cover quite a bit in here on just stress in layman's terms um, just so we can clearly understand how it affects us day to day and then we went on to cover other areas such as exercise for those who already train and those who have never trained in their life Uh, And we talked a bit about Stuart's um, new book and training program, Fight Block, which will be available on Amazon very soon. And then we actually went off the train. So the podcast isn't a long one, um, but I had a good time recording it and um, enjoyed the training at BST after. I should also note that if anybody competes, uh, there's some very good bits in there about high-intensity training, uh, the dangers of it in the the aspect of overtraining, benefits of it as well. And there's a fair bit on um, the importance of reducing stress in the lead up to competitions as well so um yeah give it a listen so welcome to our fifth podcast uh, we've been focusing a lot on mental attitude um and i wanted to bring that back into how it physically affects you so today we've got stuart turner on uh he's a physiotherapist at tier one what was it stuart tier one Tier one training and rehabilitation systems that's Jack. it in, <laughs> sorry in, <laughs> i just noticed tier one um in in northampton so uh we thought we'd bring him on thanks for coming on stuart yeah you're welcome jack no problem thanks for coming up uh so we'll start off with um stress because i know you did a talk recently didn't you on on stress yeah i mean it's at the, it, to be honest it's that it's at the heart of everything we do at tier one so i mean we have to take into consideration like the role of stress in recovery how it affects position in the body how it affects us mentally, but also like the, the, the direct link with inflammation now and everything. But I think, like obviously, yeah, just talking about it now, just briefly going on to it. When you say stress, I think people have this sort of psychological, um, they, they, they assume psychological all the time that you say to them, you hear someone say, I'm stressed, I'm stressed. And they think it's this sort of psychological process going on in the mind and everything. But really, it's so much more than that. There's there's so much going on in the body when, when, when with regards to stress. But really, people need to appreciate actually just what it is. And it's so much more than just a psychological, um, emotional sort of like per se. So stress really is anything, and I mean anything, that affects normal energy production in the body. So obviously your brain is hardwired for survival. It's constantly making thousands upon thousands of decisions just to just to keep us alive. So keep the core, the, like the core going, core temperature, the organs going, everything like that. So really, once that gets disrupted... That's, that's a form of stress on the body. So stress is a physical thing. It's not just an emotional thing as well. So I won't bore you with it, Jack. It's called homeostasis and everything like that in the body. But that that really is, is stress is anything that, that disrupts homeostasis. So anything that disrupts normal energy production in the body. So anything that affects homeostasis. So what, what would that be? What are the main stresses? Well, if you think about it this way, um, if you look think about sort of caffeine, Caffeine is a stimulant. When you ingest caffeine, obviously that affects normal energy production within the body. So obviously, um, so nutrition again, nutrition. Any like so, we, you must have heard it now about sort of pro-inflammatory foods, yeah, anti-inflammatory yeah. There's, there's, there's foods, all that sort of stuff. Uh, I've been listening to like they say a lot of refined carbohydrates causing inflammation. So. Yeah. So and obviously, yeah, I, I'll use sort of like pastries and stuff like that. Yeah, so yeah. we know it's sort of pro-inflammatory in the body and stuff like that. So nutrition has a really powerful effect on uh, causing stress or combating stress, which we can sort of uh, discuss later if you want me yeah, to. Yeah. That sort of stuff. So um, yeah. So it is anything that disrupts energy in the body. So nutrition, yeah. exercise is a form of stress on the body. But it's the, the beautiful thing about exercise is, is is it's one thing that we can actually manage. We can manipulate it. Um, that through programming, recovery, and everything like that to be a positive. Obviously, in this day and age, exercise too much or too little can be a form of stress on the body. So yeah, um, hydration levels, sleep is a powerful one. Sort of recovery methods. I've, and I've heard um, obviously Shakey's and um, Lindsay's podcast. Obviously, practicing gratitude and that can actually lower stress um, levels in the body, physically and mentally. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's really that sort of concept of yeah it's just so much more than a mental thing it's a physical thing um, and the actual physiological response in the body is pretty much the same in everybody so our, our brains are hardwired for survival as we touched on and um, the caveman sort of side of us 
where it is, is, is still there. The brain obviously is, is evolved on top of our caveman brain. So we're not too, dis, not too different from sort of 50,000 years ago when we were cavemen and women, obviously going out, hunting, gathering berries, sleeping, making little babies, resting, recovering, and, and then doing it all over again. So the only time we were sort of faced with stress or we, our, our sort of biological makeup is designed to be faced with stress is when our uh, survival is under threat. Um, and obviously when we go out hunting and stuff like that, because you've obviously got to be alert. So stress, the stress response is, um, is a really powerful thing in, in, in all of us today because stress is everywhere in modern society. Um, the stress response is quite simply um, when we are faced with a biological stressor, so like if we ingest too much caffeine, if we're faced with an incident of road rage or something like that, um, our bodies mobilize energy. So we like see adrenaline, you must have heard us like say, yeah, adrenaline is released in the body. It mobilizes um, energy stores and gets us ready, gets us ready for action. So it's that fight or flight response. That is the stress response. So fight or flight. So if, if you're constantly stressed, you're basically constantly on edge. Energy you're constantly, constantly fight or flight. You're constantly in fight or flight mode. Yes, obviously. And you're not ever going to go, you're not ever switching off into your rest and digest. So you're unable to recover. You're unable to rest easy and stuff like that. So it's no wonder in modern society, these people that are constantly in fight or flight, yeah, yeah. that anxiety, depression and everything like that is on the rise because people just haven't got the ability to flick out of that, to switch off and switch into that rest and recover mode. So... It's really powerful, like I say, when you look at it like that, I mean, I heard Lindsay, uh, he used a really good example of road rage, people being unhappy, obviously this perpetual state of unhappiness in your second podcast. Um, so he, yeah, he was saying like, these are the guys out there every day, they're getting in the car and they're going out and they're, they're hitting every red light and going, obviously, oh, yeah. I'll hit the red light again, or they're calling everybody like yeah, by yeah, some yeah. sort of names I won't utter on here and everything like that, <laughs> using gestures and hand gestures and everything like that. Um, so, I mean, how many of those people do you know, Jack? I mean, yeah. I've, we've all been there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so they are pretty much self-destructing. They're, they're, they're hitting the sort of stress response on a daily basis. So they're, they're, they're unhappy mentally, but also think of the physical effects that they're having on their body. So yeah, the, this fight or flight system. But the most important thing when it comes to stress is now, I believe, this direct link with inflammation. Yep. So when we're in that fight or flight mode or when we're like that, that we're under that stress response, our body sort of switches into a pro-inflammatory state. Um, so yeah, inflammation is produced on a sort of, uh, like it cascades through the body as a means of communication to your brain trying to work so, out what's gone wrong. So is that like anything? So from joint pain to like anything? Yeah, inflammation is it's a means of communication. So like the brain, like your, your body will initiate it to, to, to almost like a bodily scan just to see is, is there any way, like anything that needs to be flagged up. So, you know, like if, if you lift, if you do a bicep curl or something like that, you will get some localized inflammation and your body, it's, it's, a, it's a form of scan. Your, your nervous system picks that up, realizes that obviously you've, you've worked your bicep and then adapts to it. So obviously stress leads to adaptation, which leads to improvements. It's obviously when stress exceeds yeah. the ability to adapt or exceeds the ability to recover that you get sort of this breakdown. And it, but in, in terms of like, yeah, stress throughout the body, Think about it like this then. So every time our stress response is initiated, every time these guys get road rage, there is a process of inflammation going on in the body. Um, and unfortunately, inflammation is now, there's a lot of research going into this, but it's like the, the, I read a big quote from some doctors the other day saying that inflammation is, the, is at the cornerstone of every modern disease. So your big four, your big hitters like diabetes, Alzheimer's, like even like they're saying like uh, there's research now into cancer. Does it, does it occur more often in a in an inflamed state than in a, obviously chronic inflammation yeah. and stuff like that? Um, I mean that's a bit over my head, but yeah, yeah. but yeah, but like say yeah, there's a huge huge amount of sort of links now between this sort of stress response, chronic stress leads to chronic inflammation, which leads to um, illness, disease, and unfortunately death, early death. So effectively. You are killing yourself by getting over, over what you are. <laughs> well, you are well, it, well yeah. I mean, I, was, I read a, a, a really, really uh, good study about a year ago. It's a 30 year study in that. And, and these guys, they looked at sort of stress, inflammation, and stuff, and, and the, the chronic state of inflammation. And they were saying that they likened it to um, playing Russian roulette. So everybody, you know, the game Russian roulette, yeah, yeah, put yeah, the bullet yeah. in the chamber, spin it, and flick it. Um, they likened it to that. They were saying that the vast majority of people, um, are born with if you're genetically if you're genetically sound obviously if you're really really lucky then obviously you've got no you hear about these people living to 110 years old yeah, smoking yeah. they've got no bullets in the chamber but they likened it for the average person to um everybody has one 
one bullet in the chamber. If you smoked, if you smoke, for example, smoke through like that, that is the equivalent of putting another bullet in the chamber. If you drink too much, that is the equivalent of putting another bullet in the chamber. If you have poor nutrition, poor lifestyle, another bullet in the chamber. And then put sort of road rage and all your sort of yeah, modern yeah. day stress and people up. there. So there are literally people out there walking around with six bullets in the chamber, like a loaded gun. So they are ticking time bombs, unfortunately. So relating, obviously we've got a massive tangent, but relating like that, that all back to what we do, you think about my job as a, as a therapist and my job as, a, as a, an S&C coach or a trainer or, stuff, or a coach or any, of any sort of kind. If you think about it this way, is the one hour that I see someone a week going to make a big difference to that person? Or if I can then control or help them in the, the other 23 hours in their day, is that going to have more of a profound effect? Yeah, so I, could, I can help someone's neck pain. I can, get, I can get them go away feeling better. But if they are undergoing road rage, undergoing perpetual stress, like chronic inflammation in their body, it's going to come back, isn't it? There's yeah, this yeah. link with pain and everything like that. So what we're trying to do at tier one, like I say we're trying to sort of uh, break the norm, yeah. is, uh, is trying to look at the, the other 23 hours in the day, the other seven days in the week that, we, that we, people can get control of themselves. So the tier one, what we do is we're trying to, um, trying to coach people to make better decisions. We're trying to build better habits in our clients. And it's having a massively positive effect. People are, so it's, they have to play the long game. So it's like talking about this like, whole thing versus consistency versus intensity, which is better. It's consistency every time. Um, the day one chat we have with people is, look, yes, I can get you out of pain right now or we can improve you or whatever. But really to make a huge difference, you need to stick out this for a solid year. Like you need to build better habits. You need to um, start sort of being empowered and, and being educated on this because that's all it is at the end of the day. If, if we can make people be make better decisions and, make, and consistently make people make better decisions, then they're going to improve in all areas. Yeah. So, definitely. yeah, I mean, like I say, that's the, the whole stress thing is it's massive now because... Ultimately, stress is a really powerful tool, or it's a really destructive, um, a really destructive thing. So, if somebody's, let's say, we, we touched on it earlier, if somebody's ability to handle stress is good, then obviously they can, that, that means that they can recover. So they they're going to undergo a series of stress. They're going to be able to recover from it, and then their body will adapt to it and make it better for next time. That's the essence of human survival. That's why we're at the top of the food chain. We undergo stress. Our body and brains make a, a, adapt to it, and ultimately we can handle it better next time. But in modern society, like say, stress is, you see it in everybody now, stress is far exceeding the ability to recover, and that's yeah, why yeah. people are breaking down. That's why we're seeing issues. So, so obviously, things like regular exercise reduce it? Yeah. The well, keys they're, to, well, they're a form of stress themselves, but I mean, they reduce the mental aspect of stress. Well, too. yeah, it's, it's massive now, isn't it? Like you know, say, I heard in the other podcast and that, that these guys, like PTSD is huge now. Yeah, Obviously, yeah, people yeah. coming back from the forces, um, firefighters, and like, seeing things they shouldn't, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, say, under chronic stress, like the ambulance services, the public services. It's like no wonder PTSD is on the rise, unfortunately. Um, but the, yeah, the big, big area is to combat stress. Number one, yeah, exercise, aerobic system. We know that people who have better aerobic systems or better aer aerobically fitter live on average seven years longer. Seven that's years, a, lot, a long yeah. time. That's a long it time. Your grandkids. You're knocking on the door. Seven, yeah. seven yeah. years will be a lot. Yeah, so it's, it's just a long time. And it's enjoy your pensions, enjoy your grandkids and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, and like I so said, the mental side of it, you hear about sort of like haven and techniques now. You hear about mindfulness, yeah, practicing gratitude. Yeah, 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 and obviously that's one thing I do. I heard Lindsay say it. Um, and just, yeah, just like all that kind of stuff, but it's, yeah, really develop your aerobic system. It's not, it's not, there's, no, there's an old saying, isn't there? There's nothing new under the sun. Um, good nutrition, good sleep, good habits, good exercise levels and that. And I'd say if you, if you can get those, those things right, the ch like your ability to handle such uh, stress is going to. Generally, you'll huge. probably get less stressed anyway, won't you? If you, if you, uh, after yeah. a good workout, like you drop something, you're like, yep. oh, oh, well. Right, Some of the best, I, like, the, the, I am guaranteed, guaranteed not to get road rage on a Saturday morning after boxing. Guaranteed. I, f I float home after, after yeah, boxing because yeah. it's, it's all gone. Everything, every, all, my, yeah, yeah. all my attention for the week is gone. I mean, you've probably had it with your jiu-jitsu and everything yeah, like that. Yeah. After a competition, you're probably the, the most yeah. chilled you've yeah, ever been yeah, yeah. unless you've lost. Oh, yeah. Then, yeah. <laughs> obviously, then, obviously, then it all comes flooding back. But um, yeah, so with regards to all that, yeah, so develop your aerobic system, number one. Resistance exercise is, is really good. Obviously, that's, I say, we, there's, there's so many benefits to resistance exercise. People are lifting. I mean, I've got a 78-year-old who deadlifts sort of, 50 kilograms she comes in every monday and we do other bits with her and stuff but resistance exercise aerobic system nutrition all of that 
it's it's not rocket science, is it? But, no. it, but it's, it's just empowering people to to be able to make better decisions, to be able to be consistent with those things. So yeah, with I mean. with aerobic system, because I've got a lot of guys that listen to this that probably I'm not going to go for a jog because it will burn my gains. Or something <laughs> like that, right? Um, you've actually um, come out with a training program now, haven't you? Called Fight Block. Yes. And um, we'll talk about that more in a minute. But the basis of that is building your aerobic system to enable or like performance. Well, yeah, enable performance, but in all aspects, isn't it? So yes, yeah. So aerobic system is is your, is your platform for. for I, don't, I don't care who you are, whether you're a sprinter or a high jumper, an explosive combat athlete, or anything like that in the, in the forces. Your aerobic system is your platform for performance. This this hot, we're in a we're in a sort of a high energy, high intensity sort of world now. I mean, like hit training is is well. I I did a thing recently that's called the hit training epidemic. I've got nothing against hit training. You absolutely need it. Obviously, you absolutely need it. But it goes back to this thing as well, doesn't it? Like high intensity training is a, it imposes a huge stress on the body. So we, what so what we do now with our athletes and everything, we, we talk to them as if their body is a bank account. So it's like okay, knowing what stress is, every time you do a high intensity session, you're effectively withdrawing a large amount of cash from your body. So if you do that consecutively, so all you do is hit training, like high intensity work, you're pretty soon going to find yourself in debt. And you're going to need time to pay that off. You'll burn out. Yeah, and it, it won't be long if if that's all you're doing. It won't be long before the bailiffs come knocking, mm-hmm. in the form of pain, fatigue, overtraining, injury, or worse. Obviously, once it starts going into the you can start going to the really murky waters of it. Sort of that's when you get sort of a depressed athlete, an anxiety like anxiety riddled athlete. Somebody's performance is dipping, then they fall into that trap of my performance is dipping. Or, or I'm not seeing the gains. I'm not seeing. Oh, I'm not losing weight. So what do I need to do? They then go. And they think they then need to work harder. So they then do more intensity training, or they then start doing something extreme like cutting calories. So then they've got another form of stress on the body, and you can see the cycle Which that they're so in. Important. All of a sudden, they're in a massive hole. So going back to that aerobic system, if I told you right now, if you were to go flat out on a t- on a sprint for one minute, that your aerobic system would provide more than fifty percent of that energy. Did that shock you? Hmm. So you think sprinting is anaerobic, don't you? Yes, but your aerobic system provides more than fifty percent of that sprint. But it also is the it's your aerobic system that metabolizes all of the waste products that have like come come about from sort of high intensity work. So high intensity training, like I'm not bashing it at all. You absolutely need it, but they absolutely complement each other. On one hand, you've got high intensity training, which you get so you're getting all this anaerobic like benefits to it, but you're still working your aerobic system sort of one is still supplying a lot of that energy. The next day, you've got the byproducts of, of high intensity work. You've we've drawn a large amount of cash. You should do a low day. What we then that's when you start. Then it's when you work your aerobic system the next day, because you're still then um, you're still training. You are still that which makes you consistent, but also you're metabolizing um, all of the waste products, and your aerobic system is your recovery system as well. So by flushing um, fresh oxygenated blood through the, throughout the body, but it has a positive effect. It helps you to shift into a recovery mode. It creates what we call a parasympathetic effect on the body, i.e., that pulls you out of that fight or flight into that rest and recover. So they absolutely complement each other. That's why we operate at Tier One. We very often operate what we call the high low principle. So you have a high day one day and a low day the next, then a high day the next day and a, and a low day the next. And that helps you create consistency, but also just keep moving forwards at the same time. So yeah, the aerobic system, um, it will not make you slower. That's a myth. It will not make you slower. So you, you're sort of speed athletes. Um, they will do their high days. They'll do all their fast days and, everything, and then they'll do a recovery day, Then which is basically aerobically driven, aerobically focused. So there is a complete myth about... Um, about yeah, it makes you slow. It does not make you slow. There's no evidence to support that. Um, going back to that sort of yeah, so yeah, it, it doesn't have to be boring long distance yeah, yeah, running. Yeah. You know, you see a picture of Muhammad Ali going up for his like two hour runs <laughs> and that in the desert before we fought Foreman and stuff. Um, there are many, many, many different ways to actually work your aerobic system. You can actually do it by lifting weights, okay. like tempo methods and stuff like that. You can do like little mini circuits. You can do what well, I would say. We I favour something called cardiac output training. So it's also called cardiac volume training, and it's basically you just do anything that keeps your heart rate between one twenty and one forty, or one twenty and one fifty, depending on your age and fitness levels. Um, so yeah, that can be like a little bit of skipping, throwing a ball against the wall. It can even be sports specific drills like shadow boxing. So you can stuff. find basically anything you like. Anything you like that gets your heart rate. Up. Anything you like that gets you can stick, and you just stay between one twenty and one fifty. 
Uh, if you're a complete beginner, 20 minutes, and then do 30 minutes, 40 minutes, so 50 if, minutes. if we split this down, for so people that have never trained, for example, yep. if anyone's listening to this, what should they start with? Just go for a gentle jog or high intensity? What's If they've got 15 minutes in their day, that's the issue, isn't it? Uh, if you've got 15 minutes, um, you can still do low intensity. If you're a total beginner, you're yeah, still yeah, going suppose, to, because yeah. it's again, goes back to stress. You're going to yeah, put, yeah. Put, uh, provide a positive amount of stress on the body and your body will adapt to it if you're a complete beginner. If you're an elite athlete, 15 minutes is a drop in the ocean. It won't do a damn yeah, thing. It, anything, it might yeah. help you recover a little bit, but it won't do it. Won't do anything. So these guys, I can understand where the hit training sort of falls into yeah, favour yeah. because it is short, sharp. Um, you got the, like, the guys like the body coach, and that they've made it fun as well, which is great. But unfortunately, um, it goes back to that stress and it's not really sustainable. Long it's term. not sustainable. No, it's not sustainable. That's the problem with it. And you hear people doing it, they say, oh, I can't walk the next day, like, and my legs are shaking, and oh, I couldn't get up the flight stairs. And the problem we have is people, people assume that's the sign of a good workout. A good workout shouldn't make you sore, it should make you better. Yeah. Anyone could like to say, that's, that's a different scenario where we work right off the 80 20 rule. Like, a, a good trainer makes you better. Anyone can work you out, but a good trainer makes you better. And, and obviously, they can structure a program to make you better, to, to work towards the goals that you have or work towards high-end performance for an elite athlete or something like that. So what I would say to somebody who's only, who's only got 15 minutes, okay, well, let's work on, first and foremost, let's work on looking at the structure of your day so we can structure more than 15 minutes yeah. over time. So 15 minutes is a good starting point, but over time we realise that we're going to need a little bit more time with you. Um, so yeah, I, I truly believe that structure is the is the key to all of success. Like having a structured day, having a structured system at work. Like So we work off, like even when we design our programmes, we design our training day. We we operate off something called the R seven. So we break down our work uh, our workout. So there's there's seven hours to a to a good workout. So R one being release. So uh, I know foam rolling is a big thing these days. So that's like say releasing any sort of tight structures. So uh, yeah, you could do some foam rolling maybe. So in that in that section, R two stands for reset, changing the position of the body, putting the body in a better position. So we do things called reset exercises. So, and then the R3, readiness. So that's your traditional warm-up, getting somebody physiologically warm, get, uh, focus on joint mobility, all that kind of stuff. Maybe some skill set work in there if it's an athlete. R4 is where we do our reactivity work. So power development. So maybe throwing some med balls, maybe doing a bit of skipping, something like that, or even some box jumps. R5 is resistance. That's where we fit in our sort of lifting and, and body weight lifting or sort of weight lifting. R6 is resiliency. So obviously that's your conditioning. R7 is recovery. So the guy, people come in, we can sort of reset the reset them if they're coming in all stressed out from road rage, they're late, they've got kids. Our workout day allows them, we can bring them down with reset exercises so we can do some, maybe some breathing drills in there even or some reboot their central nervous system. And then we can bring them up like in a bell, shirt, bell curve sort of shape, peak them at sort of like the resistance exercise and then bring them back down and then focus on some recovery work at the end. So they go out feeling absolutely chilled not gassed, not <laughs> like absolutely dying, puking their guts, that sort of thing. So it's even good. our even our workouts are structured like that. So yeah, everything we do at tier one is, is to a system. So we've looked at that for say um a general person. Now I know there's a few athletes that listen to this as well. What's best for them then if they're being told high intensity, we're saying slow that down, especially if you've got sparring sessions, I suppose that's gonna be quite intense itself, isn't it? So Yeah, so when you, if, if you're a combat athlete, so outside of sort of fight camps, you can do sort of general exercises. So you don't have to be hard sparring all the time. You can do sort of general work. That's where you can do like your bike work. You can do, you can lift some weights and all that sort of stuff. And obviously you don't have to be mimicking your sport. When you get sort of nearer towards entering a fight camp or near, or entering like, comp, like entering a, a true fight camp, that's when you need to do very, very specific work. So that's when you, yeah, you do this like, instead of like going on the, like, um, I don't know, doing a minute sprint or whatever, you do uh, some bag work, some high intensity bag work or some wrestling drills or something like that. So yeah, just the, focusing on uh, being more specific towards the competition is really important. Being more generalised outside of your fight camps is important for health and important for your joints and, and everything like that. But if you goes back, yeah, so the guys that are doing high intensity work all of the time, think about what you're doing in a fight camp. You're having to make weight unless you're mm. Tyson Fury or someone like yeah. that. Tyson Fury doesn't cut weight, does he? Um, <laughs> He's coming down a bit. He's now. coming down a bit. Now, bless him. Yeah, um, it's good to see him back. But um, yeah, so you've got this the huge stress of obviously having to, to make weight. That's a massive stress on the body. So that think about the body as a bank account again. Yeah. That's taking money out of the account. If you're doing back to back sort of high intensity sessions, I think that's a mistake in your training. 
um, in terms of yeah, you're probably going to start needing multiple trips to the, well, you, to the physio and stuff like that. With that, you're probably emotionally stressed as well. You're preparing for a fight. Absolutely. If you're doing high intensity workouts, you're very physically stressed. Yep. And if you're repeatedly doing both of them, you like your body combine it with a weight cut. Yeah, exactly, weight cut, and you've got to be at your peak for this fight. So now begs the question: How many athletes do you know? How many combat athletes that have to pull out fights because through injury or ha- or have to because it's their 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 livelihood have to then go into a fight feeling terrible yeah, yeah. or carrying an injury and stuff like that it's going to affect your performance isn't it yeah, yeah so what if we can structure their training program using a higher high low principle if we can like build them up and accumulate good sort of resistance and resiliency to to stress and everything in their general training outside of fight camps so when they go into their fight camps they they're actually ready and they can they, they they're ready to do their just specific work. refining yep. skills and yeah so if you're if you if you've got a bang on if you've got a a, um, a training a year round training program that's right for you that you've been assessed you've got like we, we know your stats we know your sort of like the way you move and everything like that so in the general training we're correcting faulty movement patterns we're correcting any conditioning issues but keeping you sort of well within that stress recovery balance so you're in good shape all year round you go into a fight camp you're, you're not having to worry about losing a ton of weight because we've kept you in shape all year round you've we, you've stayed ready as they say all we've got to do here is drop a, drop a little bit of weight gradually over may it say an eight week period we've got your nutrition on point so we know that we like your nutrition is good so that's there's no worry of stress there we've got your training balance right so we've got a good balance between high intensity work and an aerobically driven work which is complements your recovery so we're combating all areas of stress in your life there aren't we mm. um so yeah, i'm working with a couple of guys at the moment um a big shout out to jordan Vichenich. um I just started working with Jordan and the kid has got something special with his mentality. We just need to get him better with his ability. Like I say, he, he was another one of these guys. Uh, he's one of the hardest working guys I know, but it's almost like you've got to save them from themselves. The athletes, these athletes, you save them from themselves. Yeah, it's like, yeah. You know, it's the, like Jordan is such a great kid and that, like you see him, he wants to work hard all of the time. He's like, you're working like every day. It's like, just slow down on these days a little bit, mate. And he will tell you now, like he's feeling great. Like we've now, we've, now we've got a better balance in his life. Um, we've got more stable. His weight's more stabilized. Like he's going to go on to big things. I've got no doubt about that. And like he gets it now. Like he's seen the, the, the high low principle in action, and everything, and he feels. He's, he's, he tells me I'm feeling great now. I'm no, I'm not feeling tired. I'm not feeling cranky. Um, so yeah, these athletes, yeah, back to back hit stuff is a mistake. Like, it's, like just doing repeated sprints isn't going to make you better in the long run and you can almost be forgiven though can't you because people think they see these guys they see them training they see a fight and they think that's an anaerobic sport i've got to train anaerobically mm. so, yeah but yes, obviously like you need to train that absolutely but you need to then obviously it's about getting that balance right and i know it's a bit of a cliche people talk about balance and everything but it really is yeah everything is about balance so your aerobic system is, is like is yeah is your platform to performance so we've covered a bit for people that do train. We've covered a bit for people that don't train yet. Hopefully will after this podcast. Um, <laughs> and uh, we'll just talk about Fight Block quickly, the book that you've published. Yeah, okay. So what is it? So pretty much everything we've just discussed. So um, obviously I, I, I started training. Um, I went from an exclusively a boxing, strict boxing gym to now I train at um, an MMA uh, club called uh, BST, Blood, Sweat and Tears, Northamptonshire. Um, so... Yeah, the coach there, Lee Edwards, was one of the best sort of, well, I've experienced a few boxing coaches. He's the best by far and away coach I've ever worked under. Um, he's been, he, like I say, this guy's so dedicated. He goes to Cuba and had to learn all the footwork and everything like that. I mean, I'm talking Can't like miss. he seriously has a passion for it. And he's, he's the most positive guy I've ever met. But working under Lee in an MMA club doing boxing, you get to see what these guys are doing. So, yeah, these guys, like I say, unfortunately despite their best intentions, like doing like repeated high intensity work and you see them, they, they, they're looking around and they, they're, they're cutting weight and they're having to cut an extreme amount of weight whilst doing sort of high, highly explosive anaerobic efforts. And it's no wonder these guys, they look pale, they look washed out and everything like that. So um, really the book was just to sort of get across to these guys. So I'm making friends with these guys like on a daily basis and, and see, and obviously a, a lot of them now have come to me for treatment and come to me for advice and everything. And it was really was just to... Um, just to get it out there to these guys that, that, that maybe we, if we did it this way, maybe you'd feel at least feel better. And if, you, if you're feeling better, the chances are you're going to perform better. So just getting out there to these guys, yeah, the importance of the aerobic system. 
So when I was writing Fight Block, I wanted to do it in a way that was like trying to make the complex sound easy to these guys because it is. It's just simplifying the, the need for the aerobic system, the need to be consistent in your training. So like cons- I have a saying, consistency trumps intensity. So if you're the, the, the guy that's consistent over the course of a year will, will beat anybody that sort of has six weeks of hardcore training and then has an injury or has to take yeah. a break, gets ill or something like that because of it, then they have to start again do another sort of five weeks and it's, they're in this sort of trapped in that cycle. The guy that's consistent will be the guy that wins. So trying to get these guys let to understand that, dispel the myths of the aerobic system, dispel the myths that it's going to make you slower, it's going to make you better, it's going to help you more, it's going to make you more resilient to stress, but it's going to contribute more to those anaerobic efforts as well. So these are the, the guys with better aer- aerobic systems that then develop power. But these are the guys that can like literally dictate the pace of a fight these are the guys that can literally like yeah like like throw machine gun punches at people yeah. and then like sit down in their corner and come out looking brand new sort of thought of roberto duran style um so yeah that, that the book was about that really and really to introduce a new way of training to these guys i mean how many i mean how many times have you done it jack like gone into a gym and thought what am i doing today yeah, yeah, or like that machine's taken. What shall I do next, or something like stand that? Stand there and stare at the yeah, stand there, yeah, yeah, and it's glare, <laughs> glare at them until yeah, until like yeah, it's like you'll see the guys like having five minute chats or whatever. It's taking Instagram selfies, yeah, like more road rage, more stress. Yeah. <laughs> um, Stop curling in the squat rack. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, just trying to get across these guys structure as well. Develop your aerobic system. Develop. Have a structure to your workout. Have a plan. And stick to it, it's and be consistent be with it. it. Yep, you, you, you can monitor it. a plan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So if it's then is it, and I, and at the end of it, how did you feel? Well, obviously, let's see. When we even track people's like heart rate variability, we track people. We have recovery trackers of people and everything like that. So we can monitor: is that is the program we've given? Is it putting too much stress on them so they're breaking down, or is it, is it putting too little stress on them so they're not adapting? So we're really able to hit that sweet spot with these guys. Um, but yeah, so say so just trying to make everything that sounds really complex or so all like it'll dispel myths. That was the whole purpose of Fight Block. So it really does touch on yeah your aerobic system, your other your other energy systems. So sort of like how to how to develop those, um, how to how and when to switch from general to specific training. The, the importance of doing both. So like just smashing a punch bag all year round. Not it's probably not the best thing to do in terms of your longevity. Like you know, there are other things that you can do. I mean. Like you said it earlier, like these long runs, it, like cardio doesn't have to be long, boring runs. You don't have to do it for like two hours a day if you hate it. If you've got, if you've got knee problems, stuff like that, you don't necessarily have to go on long runs all the time. So that cardio output stuff, it introduces that. So yeah, there's a, there's a lot in there, but it's it really is, um, yeah, just about just getting across these guys, just like getting the basics the right across. Do, it, do yeah. the basics perfectly. Your chances are your performance is well, going to go through the roof. The good thing about tier one as well is you've got an app with it, haven't you? Yeah, so with the with the fight block, yeah, so there's a yeah, there's there's a there's a thirty six week we've included a thirty six week training program, so that's like yeah, so it's almost like a year round yeah, training. Yeah. So if you're an athlete, if you're a combat athlete, it has two fights a year, take into consideration those eight weeks of training camps that you have to then go and be specific in. Fight block gives you a training template outside of that. It's completely video based, the whole thing. So uh, yeah, if you, don't you know buy the book, you get a physical yeah. book. But we also get you also get to download the entire ebook uh, version of the book, but also the entire thirty six week training program, which includes all of your aerobic testing, all of your strength testing, your power testing. You then go and do your blocks of training, so like your aerobic block of training. You retest yourself at the end of it. You get to see improvement, which makes you feel better. Yeah. Then you do your strength block, so like you say, you, you focus on that. You get to see your pre and post uh, block stats. You'll see an improvement there. It makes you feel better. So important as well is you are improving, but you're physically seeing that you're improving. I mean, that's a yeah, yeah. powerful, powerful weapon to any sort of combat athlete. But to be honest, it's not because it's general training. Any anyone can do it. So if you're like a guy uh, who wants to just get into good shape, you can do fight block. If you're an MD who lives a very busy, stressful life, want to start making time for yourself to feel better, you can do fight block. So it's, it's and the benefits of people that I suppose aren't used to much physical training, you've actually got. On the app, you can. It's linked to videos, isn't it? So you yep. say to do an exercise, you click on that exercise, thinking, "Oh, I don't know how to do it," and there's a video telling you how to do it. Yep. So all so, the cues on yeah. it. I've got written cues, verbal cues on a lot of them, and everything like that. Yeah, so yeah. it's pretty. Yeah, That's six months good. of my life, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> I was exhausted, mate. So talking about it's like, yeah, isn't it? Six months of making like nonstop videos. So it's, you know when it's you start a job it, yeah, and then three yeah. minutes down you're just, you're just thinking oh why on earth did I do this for <laughs> <laughs> this is why not everyone writes books it's all come together now though isn't it so yeah yeah, yeah it's pretty good I'm, and then, to be honest we're already at, um, 
I'm, I'm already updating him. I'm, I'm, I'm my business partner. I'm going to bring him on board now. He's uh, John Fatchy. He's, he's his, his knowledge of like writing gym programs, strength programs, and that is insane. The, I mean, I, I get jealous of him at times of his work ethic. I mean, he flies to the states. He's like really good friends with like Joel James and like you know like Demetrius Johnson yeah, train and yeah. stuff like that. And I've, I've had the privilege of meeting him and that. We go to go. We live off these guys' uh, knowledge, like Mike Robertson. Bill Hartman is the best physio in the world, without a shadow of a doubt in my mind. Like his friends, like, I've been out there. He's taken me out there, but he, his work ethic is is phenomenal. So. I'm hoping to get to actually grab him and get him to write yeah, some yeah. of the programs for, for version two. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so where where can people find it? It's just uh, it actually goes live on Amazon in a couple of weeks. Live so, on Amazon. Yeah, in a couple yeah of weeks. we just yep. finally decided on, on, on how, what we want on there and pricing format yeah, and everything yeah. like that. So, um, yeah, so it'll be on Amazon hopefully two weeks Monday. Brilliant. I will yeah. share that when it's up. But yeah, just going going back to the one thing as well. I think. Um, People ask it, but like I get a lot of students now. Like, so I try and give back a lot. So like, we get a lot of students on work experience and stuff, and they always say, um, "What's the key to, to like tier one being successful, or what's the key to be a successful like therapist and trainer and stuff like that?" I always steal a fra- uh, uh, like use a phrase. Um, oh, hopefully, I can swear on here. Steal <laughs> shit from successful people, yeah. which is what got me interested in your podcast, Jack. So, like you're doing this podcast, breaking the norm. You're saying like uh, I listen to what successful people do. And like they make little notes and they go, that guy does that. That 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 might work for me. And then you you steal that idea. Yeah, yeah. Like it's plagiarism at its finest. Like, yeah. and like so. Well, that's basically um, like what NLP was when I had Gary on as well. It's looking at how people do things well and trying to do it too. That's it. Yeah. yeah. That's it. And I say that's what I say. Steal shit from successful people. So fuck. Find out what a successful person does. I never used to get up early. Um, I, I try and get up early, even if like say the, the lads laugh and they call me a part timer because I don't start work till 10 o'clock with patients and stuff but I'm up early doing stuff like it's the yeah, best yeah. part of the day to sit and do work with um, but yeah like like for example I listened to podcast number two with Lindsay um, and he was saying about the the motivational quotes on the gym yeah, yeah. I listened to that I was on the treadmill uh, uh, obviously <laughs> at, at, um, at tier one and that and I got off the thing I was like we need motivational quotes on the walls <laughs> <laughs> like, literally I was like ordered. get them on there so we got ordered them like yeah we've got them we've got them on order now so thanks Lindsay um, and obviously yeah you listen I listened to shaky like yeah. what defines success and it's yeah. actually it was a, such a good concept isn't it like success isn't just chasing money or yeah. having like being getting an elite athlete for the, it, success is and it's a goal, isn't it? It's yeah, yeah. meeting a goal, no matter how big or how small, it's meeting that goal, that's success. Yeah, yeah. And obviously, positivity breeds positivity. You meet that goal, the chances are you're going to want more and want yeah, more. Yeah. So I hear a lot of time people saying like millionaires are greedy. I don't think that like, successful business, I don't think they are. I think they just, they hit, they hit their goal and they're like, what's next? Yeah, and then yeah. they go, what's next? Or what's next? And it's that, yeah, it's positivity breeds positivity. So you get that in fitness as well, don't you? If someone gets fit, they want to get oh, fit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and then you, you and it's just that. Yeah, it's that. It's, 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 it's perpetual motion, isn't it? That's what yeah, it is. Yeah. So yeah, steal shit from successful people. I like that. Um, and yeah, and uh, cheers you two for igniting my uh, query into Beefy Boys. Yeah, I'll be heavy. Beefy <laughs> Boys. I was like, I need to go to Beefy Boys, Anna. I need to go to Beefy Boys. So we were back in Hereford for the Easter weekend, and we and it was fully booked, and we had to walk past it as well. So it was like that absolutely <laughs> nearly broke me. So. Uh, beefy boys if you are listening yeah I'm, I'm coming for you <laughs> <laughs> it is brilliant um, I, I still need to start getting some it. sort of still discount for plugging them <laughs> well, my, well, my girlfriend's um, brother he lives over an hour away I'm going to randomly see oh he's in Hereford at Beefy Boys with the lads and I'm like what? you drove like an hour and a half or whatever just for a burger it is good it's a very Jack, good... <laughs> I'm gluten free but I'm breaking I'm breaking <laughs> that. I am, I'm going in and going all out on that I tell you <laughs> right so thanks Stuart what we'll take from that is steal shit from successful people and consistency, isn't it? Yeah, consistency trumps intensity, and really, le- like, like, work within the premises of, like of your ability to handle stress. Yeah. So, yeah. so like, even if you're starting with ten minutes a day doing something, just That's perfect. Isn't just it? be consistent. A, a, a complete yeah. beginner. I mean, that that's that's the other thing. Right, talking to when we're finishing up, a complete beginner will see results no matter what they do because they're that they're yeah, that that they're, 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 they're yeah. undergoing stress and their body's adapting to it. Um, it's when you get sort of further down the line. That your ability, like say, you need to then impose a little bit more demand on the body, another bit, and be a bit, little bit more, be a little bit more specific with what you're doing, to get that same effect. So but, uh, beginners will see great results in the initial stages, and then they'll come to you saying, I'm, "Oh, I haven't lost as much weight this week." And you're like, "It's fine. It's this is this is the process." Need to adapt now and then. Yeah. yeah. As long as the trend is going to, uh, yeah. of improvement is there, you're going to fluctuate. You're going to start fluctuating now. 
It's yeah. not going to be like it was at the beginning where you're dropping in, in, incredible amounts of weight or your strength's going through the roof. Like this is what it is. And this is when you're working with like the elite level athletes, like 1% is a huge thing. Oh yeah, massive. But yeah. to a complete beginner, 1% is nothing. So it's, yeah. yeah. So right. it's that. Brilliant. Thanks, Stuart. You're welcome, Jack. So that's the end of the podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, for those who have been asking about my book recommendations and product recommendations and stuff from our um, our guests and myself, um, I've made a separate page now so you don't have to trawl through the blog posts or newsletters. So if you go ahead to breakinthenorm.blog, there is a page and it will take you directly to any recommendations we've got um, on Amazon. If you haven't already signed up to our newsletter, please do so. It's on our homepage. You'll get a weekly newsletter uh, with positive news bulletin, our thought of the week, link to our most recent podcast and other bits. It only takes about two minutes to read, so nothing too long. Uh, stay tuned for our future podcasts. We've got um, in the next few weeks, we should have Jack Marshman, UFC fighter, um, Tim Crockett, hopefully, who's running the Atlantic, ex-British Special Forces. And also Louise Giblin, or Giblin, sorry Louise if I've mispronounced your last name, um, a world-renowned artist, just been announced in New York actually to receive an award um, for her sculptors, so that'll be a very interesting one. So stay tuned. Thank you. Bye.